chapter 11, Quidditch. As they entered November, the weather turned very cold. The mountains around the school became icy grey and the lake like chill still. Every morning, the ground was covered in frost. Hagrid could be seen from the upstairs windows, defrosting broomsticks on the Quidditch pitch. Bundled up in a long moleskin overcoat, rabbit fur gloves, and enormous beaver skin boots. The Quidditch season had begun. On Saturday, Harry would be playing in his first match after a week of training. Gryffindor versus Slytherin. If Gryffindor won, they would move up into second place in the champ house championship. Hardly anyone had seen Harry play because Wood had decided that, as their secret weapon, Harry should be kept well secret. But the news that he was playing Seeker had leaked out somehow, and Harry didn't know which was worst, people telling him he'd be brilliant, or people telling him they'd be running around underneath him holding a mattress. It was really lucky that Harry now had Hermione as a friend. He didn't know how he have got through all his homework without her. What with all the last minute Quidditch practice Wood was making them do, she had also lent him Quidditch through the ages, which turned out to be a very interesting read. Harry learnt that there were 700 ways of commenting, uh, uh, commenting a Quidditch foul and that all of them had happened during a World Cup match in 1473. That seekers were usually the smallest and the fastest, the fastest players and that mo most serious Quidditch accidents seem to happen to them. That although people really died playing Quidditch, referees had been known to vanish and turn up months later in the Sahara Desert. Hermione had become a bit more lax about breaking rules since Harry, since Harry and Ron had seen her from the mountain tray and she was m much nicer for it. The day before Harry's first Quidditch match, the three of them were out in the freezing courtyard during break, and she had con conjured them up a bright, bright blue fire which could be carried around in a jam jar. They were standing with their backs to it, getting warm, when Snape crossed the yard. Harry noticed at once that Snape was sleeping. Harry, Ron, and Hermione moved closer together to block the fire from view. They were sure it wouldn't be allowed. Unfortunately, something about their guilty faces caught Snape's eye. He limped over. Bit, bit, uh, he limped over. He hadn't seen the fire, but he seemed to be looking for a reason to tell them off anyway. What's that you've got there, Potter? It was Quidditch through the ages, Harry showed him. Library books are not to be taken outside the school, said Snape. Give it to me. Five points from Gryffindor. He's just made the rule up, Harry muttered angrily as Snape limped away. Wonder what's wrong with his leg. Though, but I hope it's really hurting him, said Ron bitterly. The Gryffindor common room was very noisy that evening. Harry, Ron, and Hermione sat together next to a window. Hermione was checking Harry and Ron's charms homework for them. She would never let them copy. How will you learn? But by asking her to read it through, they got the right answers anyway. Harry felt restless. He wanted Quidditch through the ages back to take his mind off the ner his nerves about tomorrow. Why should he be afraid of Snape? Getting up, he told Ron and Hermione he was going to ask Snape if he could have it. Rather you than me, they sat together. 
but Harry had an idea that Snape wouldn't refuse if they, there were other teachers listening. He made his way down to the staff room and knocked. There was no answer. He knocked again. Nothing. Perhaps Snape had left the book in his ear. It was worth a try. He pushed the door ajar and peered inside, and a horrible scene met his eyes. Snape and Filch were inside, alone. Snape was holding his robes above his knees. One of his legs was bloody and mangled. Filch was handing Snape bandages. Blasted thing, Snape was saying. How are you supposed to keep your eyes on all three hands at once? Harry tried to shut the door quietly, but Potter, Snape's face was twisted with fury as he dropped his robes quickly to hide his lag. Harry gulped. I just wonder if I could have my book back. Get out! Out! Harry laughed before a laugh. Before Snape could take any more points from Gryffindor, he sprang back upstairs. Did you get it? Ron asked as Harry joined them. What's the matter? In a low whisper, Harry told them what he'd seen. You know what this means? He finished breathlessly. breathlessly. He tried to get past the three-headed book at Halloween. That's where he was going when we saw him. He's after whatever it's guarding, and I back my boomstick. He led the throwing to create a diversion. Hermione's eyes were wide. No, he wouldn't. She said, "I know he's not very nice, but he wouldn't try and steal something Dumbledore was keeping safe." Honestly, Hermione, you think all teachers are saints or something? Snapped Ron. I'm with Harry. I wouldn't put anything past Snape. But what's he after? What's that door guarding? Harry went to bed with his head buzzing with the same question. Neville was snorting loud, loudly, but Harry couldn't slip. He tried to empty his mind. He needed to slip. He had to. He has his first Quidditch match in the. Few hours, but the expression on Snape's face when Harry, when Harry had seen his leg wasn't easy to forget. The next morning, down, down, very bright and cold, the great hall was full of delicious smell of fried sausages and the cheerful chatter of everyone looking forward to a good Quidditch match. You've got to eat some breakfast. I don't want anything. There's a bit of toast. Wailed her, wailed her, Molly. I'm not hungry. Harry felt terrible. In an hour's time, he'd be walking onto the beach. Harry, you need your strength. Said she, Mrs. Finnegan. Figures are always the ones who get nobbled by the other team. Thanks, Seamus. Said Harry, watching Seamus pile ketchup in his sausages. By eleven o'clock, the whole school seemed to be out in the stands around the Quidditch pitch. Many students had binoculars. The seats might be raised high in the air, but it was still difficult to see what was going on. Sometimes, Ron and Hermione joined Neville. Seamus and Dean, the West Ham. Found up in the top row, as a surprise for Harry, he had painted a large banner on one of the sheets. Scabbers had written, "It said Potter for President," and Dean, who's good at drawing, had done a large Gryffindor line underneath. Then Hermione had performed a tricky little charm so that the paint flashed different colors. 